The Minecraft community is too fast to criticize. Hell, I'm not one to stray away from my fair share of complaints, but I do have to acknowledge that Mojang brings much to the table. It's just difficult to satisfy the whole table when everyone sitting there is a picky eater and adverse to compromise. Contentious debate over the future of Minecraft's development frequent community forums, especially after the much-criticized release of 1.20. While some players dislike significant changes, many others are left wanting more. Due to the diversity of Minecraft's community, it has become very difficult for Mojang to please everyone. This is not a product of poor design, rather a fault of excellent design. Minecraft's systems-based gameplay provides a little something for everyone, leaving Mojang with everyone to please. It isn't often that one refers to Minecraft as a systems-based game. This title is usually reserved for immersive sims and the like, but Minecraft is chock full of unique systems. Systems exist in all games, as they are simply collections of related game mechanics that affect how the player interacts with the game. What differentiates systems-based game design is the dynamism and interconnected nature of the systems. The one system most integral to Minecraft's gameplay also happens to be the first one that the player interacts with, that being the fully destructible voxel grid. This system lays the foundation for the sandbox that we all know and love. Further systems build upon this voxel grid to create complex experiences unique to Minecraft. One of these unique systems is the interaction between lava and water. These mechanics can be found generating naturally, but can also be used by the player in a variety of ways. In their simplest form, cobblestone generators can be used to obtain an infinite amount of cobblestone, and nether portals can be created before mining diamonds with just a bucket. This system can be expanded upon further to solve many more problems by employing mechanics from other systems. For example, when moss is bone milled, it turns adjacent stone and other stone-like blocks into moss. In conjunction with a smooth stone generator and redstone to keep the timings, players can combine systems to create a moss farm. When fed into a composter, this can also double as a bone meal farm. These interactions are what separate Minecraft and other systems-based games from any other game. Not only are the systems themselves complex, but coordinated together, they can be used to solve many problems. If you've ever played on a small SMP with friends, you've likely found yourselves, whether intentionally or not, specializing in different aspects of the game. Usually depending on what interests them the most, players will specialize into a multitude of different categories such as Miner, Builder, Redstoner, Explorer, etc. This specialization is a product of Minecraft's system-based gameplay, where instead of attempting to be good at everything, one will instead opt to master a single system. A redstone genius may rely on a build tutorial to make a passable house, and a master builder might need a step-by-step -step tutorial to make an item sorter. Neither of these players can be considered bad at Minecraft, they have simply specialized themselves. This specialization is exemplary of the non-linear progression inherent to Minecraft. While yes, there are some linear pathways in the game, they are not mandatory, and they can be started and finished at any time. Each step of progression the player takes opens new possibilities and reveals new systems for the player to learn. This is what makes Minecraft so great. Due to the design of the diverse systems that Minecraft has to offer, the game is incredibly influenced by the player's choices rather than a predetermined route. Recently, Mojang has been adding features that neither fit into nor expand upon the systems-based design. A specific example of this is the addition of copper in 1.17. Copper was an uninteresting addition, especially as a common ore. At its inception, copper's only features were as a unique decoration, as well as being used in crafting recipes for the spyglass and lightning rod. Copper is a weak feature due to its isolation from other systems. To be interesting, new additions should add depth to Minecraft systems, such as adding the ability to generate basalt to the lava and water dynamics in 1.16. If not designed with existing systems in mind, additions will feel unimportant due to their disconnect from the rest of the game. Copper was added as an attempt to add depth to mining for the Caves and Cliffs update, but due to its near useless nature, it is more effective as an unfun space filler. The only interesting game mechanic to come from copper is the lightning rod, but that just as well could have been made from gold rather than copper. The addition of the brush adds another crafting recipe that includes copper, but this one especially feels shoehorned in. Before the addition of copper, this craft could have just as easily been with iron, but instead Mojang are forced to find uses for this useless ore. I predict that Mojang will be integrating copper into more and more crafting recipes in future updates, but this doesn't solve the root problem. Copper was not properly integrated with Minecraft systems from the start. A common suggestion that I see thrown around is to incorporate copper into redstone somehow, maybe by allowing it to transmit signals vertically, or to prevent adjacent redstone from powering one another. These solutions may not be perfect, but Mojang needs to find a place in Minecraft for copper. Rather than needlessly complaining, I'd like to provide some possible guidelines that could be followed to ensure more satisfying additions.
These guidelines will aim to prevent new features from being isolated rather than integrated with other systems. An easy method to integrate an addition into the game's existing systems is to allow said addition to cleverly interact with the voxel grid. TNT and pistons come to mind, as well as moss being a more recent example. Additions such as these assimilate so well due to the integral nature of the voxel grid. Minecraft's destructible environment interconnects all systems in the game. I know that not every addition can interact with the voxel grid. That's where the second guideline comes in. If not interacting with voxels, additions should modify or build upon existing systems. Netherite serves as a great example. Being an ore found in the nether, it both expands upon and interconnects Minecraft's existing armor and tool systems with the nether. Following these simple guidelines would prevent the addition of weak and isolated features such as copper. The key driving force in Minecraft's gameplay are its unique interconnected systems. So designing with this interconnected nature in mind is essential. Mojang needs to embrace these systems going forwards, otherwise they will slowly lose Minecraft's elegance in favor of a more unintuitive and clunky game. If they lean further into the diverse systems that Minecraft offers, it would solve the majority of the problems that complainy and picky players like myself have with modern changes.